All right, so how should you approach a problem like this? We want to match four differential equations with four possible slope fields. What's the quickest way to get to the answer? What would I do? I would look at the ones that, for one thing, most clearly have equilibrium solutions and where the slope field, at least for these examples, is most clearly zero when both t and y are zero, t or y are zero. That's these two examples. Because in both cases, you can see if y is zero, the right-hand side expressions are going to equal zero. So along the t axis, the horizontal axis where y is zero, your line segments are going to be horizontal and your solutions will be horizontal there as well. You will have the equilibrium solutions at y equals zero. Also for these examples, it happens to be the case that they equal zero when t is zero, which is the y-axis up and down. Looking quickly at the pictures, you see that it's only this one in the upper left and this one in lower, lower right that satisfy those conditions where the slope field is horizontal, zero slope along both the t-axis and the y-axis. t-axis is where y is zero, y-axis is where t is zero. So as far as reasons, what you could say, if you'd like to give your reasons, partial reasons at least up here say, both, of these right-hand side expressions that you see in choices two and three are zero when t is zero or when y is zero. Along both the y-axis where t is zero and the t-axis where y is zero, you will have horizontal lines for the slope field. Like right here, you see the horizontal lines? All the way on down. And also it's implied along the t-axis. You can see the slopes of these line segments close to the t-axis are close to zero. So it should make sense you've got horizontal line segments on the t-axis as, as well, even though you can't quite see them because they're on the axis. You will have an equilibrium solution right there so means equilibrium solution. The constant function y is always equal to one, no matter what t is, solves both of these differential equations. It's going to be the same thing with the slope, slope field in the lower, lower right. Horizontal lines along the y-axis where t is zero. Also horizontal lines along the t-axis where y is zero, it's implied again, these other line segments close to the t-axis are close to zero in slope. And once again, you're gonna have an equilibrium solution along the t-axis. Y always equaling zero is an equilibrium solution for both of these differential equations. How do you decide which one is which though? So two and three have to go with upper left choice and the lower right choice. How do you decide which is which? Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, figure out the signs of these right-hand side expressions, f of ty, in different quadrants, based on the slopes being positive or negative. Now in both choices here and here, you can see the slopes are positive in the first quadrant where both T and Y are positive. So you gotta look at other quadrants. Probably simplest to look at the third quadrant, lower left corner in both. For this example, you can see the slopes are positive in the upper left. And for this example in the lower right, you can see the slopes are negative. So now you look at these right-hand side expressions again and ask what is their sign when both T and Y are negative? 
Well, with this one, you got a negative times a negative, that's positive. And with this one, you'd have a negative times a positive, that's negative. So this one with the positive slopes in the third quadrant, one, two, three, you go counterclockwise. Positive slopes down there, that's gotta be choice two. So for a brief little reason, you could say, Ty is positive when both T is negative and Y is negative. Down here in the third quadrant, that's positive and that is dy dt. Slopes of solutions have to be positive down there, and they are. So this is choice two. And this other one in the lower right has got to be choice three. And you can see yes in the third quadrant down here where both T and Y are negative, slopes are negative. The right-hand side for the third option is T times Y squared. So a brief reason you could give is T Y squared is negative when T is negative and Y is negative. I mean, Y doesn't really matter because you got a Y squared, which will be positive. What matters is T. Slopes are negative down here when T is negative. They're also negative up here when T is negative. This was choice three. So that's what I would do first is figure out Which ones have equilibrium solutions, if any? And then once you know which ones have equilibrium solutions and which ones clearly have right-hand side functions that are zero when y is zero for equilibrium solutions that are at y equals zero at least, then think about the signs, positive or negative in, for example, the third quadrant and see if they're different. This does leave either choice one or choice four for the upper right graph and the lower left graph, how should I decide which is which? And if, if I can decide, then what kind of brief reason can I give? It's based on the right-hand side functions again. What do you want to say, Michael? I was going to say, uh, keep the slope on the x. The yep, that's true. You could say when t minus y is some constant, the slope is going to be constant, that constant. In particular, it does mean when t minus y equals 0, the slope is going to be 0. That is equivalent to the equation y equals t, which is a line through the origin with a slope of one. Along this line right about here, through the origin with a slope of one, in fact, you can see it, you can see the line segments that it's passing through all have a slope of zero. So this purple line that I've just drawn, and you should probably draw lightly as well, it's not a solution curve. It just helps you draw solution curves. That's where that's the line where slope of solution curves are zero. It's got a name. It's actually called a null cline. And actually, in the lower left one, there's going to be a null cline as well. So I'll call them null clines. There's going to be one on the lower left as well. I'll be drawing an arrow, not yet. To something down here in the lower left. So I haven't finished drawing my arrow yet. Null meaning zero, Klein meaning well, in general, a curved line. Null Klein, zero curved line. It's where the right hand side function equals zero. Moreover, you could also say the right hand side t minus y is positive if and only if y is less than t. 
right? If you take this inequality, t minus y is positive and add y to both sides and then flip around the direction of the inequality, which is fine to do. That's gonna be positive exactly when y is less than t. In other words, when you're below this line and you can see all the slopes below the line are positive. On the flip side, t minus y is negative when y is bigger than t. When you're above the line, all those slopes are negative. I will draw in some solutions, but not yet. This does go though with choice four is the answer. Uh, yeah, choice four right there. Which does by elimination leave choice one for this one. So you can say, well, by elimination, that's the only one left. But let's also think about the null line. If I set this expression, t squared plus y equal to zero, solve for y as a function of t, that's equivalent to y equals negative t squared. Along that parabola, it's gonna be a null line where the slopes of the line segments in the slope field are all zero. Coming back down here, where's that parabola? y equals t squared. If you try to draw it as carefully as you can, it's about like this. I'm trying to draw it as carefully as I can here. It's not perfect. But notice that I'm trying to go through line segments that have a close a slope close to zero, like this one here. And this one here. And this one here. All have a slope close to zero. That's what I'm kind of aiming for when I make the drawing here. About like that. More line segments that are have slopes close to zero there. That is the other null line for the other example. I'm going to continue this arrow down here. <clears throat> Remember, this null line back up here is not a solution. It just helps you draw a solution. Let's draw some solutions now into all of these. Well, over here, I should remark also that t squared plus y is positive exactly when y is bigger than negative t squared. So slopes are positive when you're above the parabola up here, including over here and over here. And slopes are negative when you're below the parabola. y is less than negative t squared. It's slopes down here that are negative. All right, yeah, let's, let's uh, draw on some solution curves now. Start in the upper left. Remember the differential equation is kind of like talking with you. It's this one for the upper left here. It's saying that at any point along a solution curve, the slope of the tangent is equal to the value of the right-hand side function, which is gonna be the slope of the little line segment that I make at that point. So anytime a solution passes through a midpoint of one of these, say right there, the solution has to be tangent to that line segment about like this. We can go backwards here, let t decrease or let t increase. Try to draw it uh, decently. If it's, if it's too bad, I'll definitely take points off on the exam if I have you draw these. It doesn't have to be perfect because nobody can really get it perfect. But the standard is decent, pretty good. Don't make bad drawings. Certainly when you cross, in this case, the y-axis, which is which you could call a null line, the tangent line has to be horizontal.
And as we've already emphasized, there's gonna be infinitely many solutions. And the general behavior is if the initial condition is positive, the solutions are concave up. And if the initial condition is negative, the solutions are concave down. I can say that without bothering to solve the differential equation. That's pretty nice. With this one, see, I start there. Try to draw it as carefully as I can. I can again. I have to draw cross the null line with a horizontal tangent. Some people go a little too fast when they're doing this kind of thing. Try to go slow enough so you get a decent picture. If the initial conditions are down here, then the functions are always increasing. This doesn't have any equilibrium solutions, but it does have a solution that's a straight line that would be in here somewhere. Say about like that. That is a slant asymptote for all the other solutions. And in fact, it looks like it's probably y equals t minus one with a slope of one and a y-intercept of negative one. That would take verification symbolically. We could do that quick. This is supposed to be choice four here. If y is t minus one, then its derivative is always one. That's the left-hand side. And t minus the function is also always one for all t. So that's a quick check that y equals t minus one solve equation four. This goes with equation four here. Confirming that what I just drew down here is a solution, the straight line here. This one's probably the trickiest one. If my initial condition was right there, say, then the solution appears to always be increasing. If it was here, then it's still always increasing, but it curves a bit more. On the other hand, if you start, say, down here, looks like you're going to cross this null line like this. Start up a little higher, maybe about here. You're still going to cross it. And if you start off high enough, but not so high that you always increase, but high enough that you still cross the null line, but maybe near the top like this, it looks like it's going to come back down and cross it again. Like that. So it's a very subtle thing here. There's a special solution that would just barely touch the null line. It looks like at the origin, probably about like that. That's a very special solution. Ignore that part. It's it's pretty subtle. You got to practice. Do the does this solution down here is it ever going to cross the null line again? It's hard to say. Hard to tell for sure. And with this one, solutions that are above the t-axis are always concave up. Below the t-axis, it's different. They're concave down at first before they become concave up, before they become concave down again, like an inverted bell-shaped curve. Some of them look like they go down so rapidly that maybe they never come back up again. And actually that is the case, though I haven't explained why. 
Some of these solutions have vertical asymptotes. It's kind of weird. We'll see if we can see why, by, why symbolically. But anyway, this is still giving you a pretty decent picture of what the solutions look like. They're up here, they don't have any horizontal asymptotes. If they're down here and they're close enough to the T axis, they've got horizontal asymptotes. That's kind of strange. Would that happen in a real life model? Possibly. Though I don't know any particular model that this is an application this can be applied to. So it's pretty much a pure math thing for us. <clears throat> 